When the government of positive change and transformation took root in Nigeria on the 29th of May 2015, its objectives were made crystal clear to put an end to the pervasive recklessness in government and chart a noble course for the nation's revival through an all-inclusive approach. Three years down the lane, the Abulolo-led administration in Niger State has, without a shadow of doubt, demonstrated an unprecedented determination to address the different phases of underdevelopment of the state. This is not a government of show-off, rather one hinged on integrity, as well as the political will to change the lot of Nigelites for the better. In government, there are those um, projects that you do that people will see. I call them projects for show. When you do them, people will see. But we have also invested a lot in human capital. Those ones you don't see. If you invest in training, you don't see. But governance is a very serious business. Governor is not a patient that, uh, that you show off. Governor is not, uh, governor is not um, a popularity contest that you want to be seen as uh, the most popular person. Governance is about setting the right um, policies, setting the, rest, the right programs. I can only summarize the governor to be very simple, willing, hardworking and accessible governor. I have worked with many VIPs in the past, both in the executive and legislative arm of government at the federal and state level. I have never seen uh, somebody that I can compare him with in terms of humility hard work and accessibility. The development agenda of His Excellency Alaji Abubakar Sanibello is quite imposing and perhaps intimidating to the average mind as it encapsulates the industrial, educational, technological, health, agriculture, water, rural development and electricity needs of the people of Niger State. We took over the reins of Niger State in what you say uh, at the zero level because no no sector was actually you know uh, anything that you could build on really um, the road infrastructure that were done were done um, by taking bonds so uh, we came in what to pay back those bonds so uh, in spite of the already bad situation we made we also needed to service in meeting its objectives, the government of the day has elaborately focused on the provision of basic and functional health, roads and bridges, agriculture, public service reform, rural infrastructure, tourism development, environmental sanitation, housing and employment opportunities, transport and power. The government is working through the ideas of solid LGA councils, security system and judicial strength to accomplish development and maintain good relations with the House of Assembly. There has been a, a robust relationship between the three arms of government. Uh, we've been having uh, some sort of brotherhood between, between the members and um, even the judiciary has been very cooperative to some of our legal issues that have, uh, who have come across uh, since uh, we came to power. The policy of uh, independence to the local governments have been issued 
very few local governments have been able to pay salaries. Now very few have the challenges, and even those that have the challenges, they have refused to take action. If they agreed with the late uh, framework the governor has built, no local government election, uh, no, no local government uh, council will not have been able to pay salary. In his three years, Mr. Governor has ensured that attention is given to abandoned projects of past administrations. Many of these projects have been rescued from the shackles of neglect and vandalism. As a government, uh, we trace back and pick up those projects even though abandoned and those that are ongoing that we believe have direct bearing with these teeming people who voted us into office. doesn't matter who begins the project, but what matters to the governor is how do we finish it. Uh, for example, the, we have the contract awarded to Julius Bajan and Jira Limited by the administration of engineer Abdelkader Abdelahe Kure in Tungamina, which was abandoned since 2007. Two, you can see the road that traversed uh, the Mina Central Market that burst out to Kuta Road. That was a project conceptualized by the last administration, which was left unfinished. Instead of engaging in building new properties, building new projects, giving out new contra uh, contracts, I want to reestablish, re-energize, renovate, reactivate the infrastructures the leaders before us have started back from the 60s, 70s. And that is the only way we we'll move forward. If, if you continue to cultivate this attitude that, okay, when I come, I want to commission my own project, and just because I want to commission a project, I will build a, a structure, thereby I ignore the ones I met, we don't move forward that way. I can mark them to uh, 100%. I will give them to 85%. I will give them a 50 because uh, really they need to do more. Definitely you cannot satisfy everybody at the same time. But like uh, in this area we are now, when they came in, I think that is when they beautified this road. The road was not in our before. When the government is Allah, I think it's a good thing. 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 The health sector is very comprehensive. People are enjoying. You can see me, I just brought my children in order to take care of them. The governor is doing his best, especially in terms of uh, infrastructural services, and then they care about the masses a lot. There are aspects that the governor has done well, and there are aspects that we have seen serious challenges. When you see drainage like this, uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, government knows what it's doing because uh, erosion is a very dangerous thing. Uh, when this government came in, the government is barely three years today. They are trying all the best they could to rectify all this mess they found on the ground. The most recent uh, uh, positive happenings within the administration of Abu Bakr uh, Sani Bello is the resettlement of those that were affected by the crisis. We've had uh, that the governor has gone around and uh, people, uh, they have compensated most of those people that have lost their lives during those crises, which is very okay and this is a good omen for the governor in 2019. If they continue that way, I hope they won't have problems in the next, uh, election, the next forthcoming elections. The cornerstone of any meaningful development is quality education. In particular, is basic education into which so much financial input is being made. At least two schools in the 274 wards in Niger State have either been thoroughly renovated or constructed, totaling 600 schools. The governor has invested in education more than any other sector. Of course, I am, I, I, I am a project manager in education. This is, this is for the first time in Niger State. Each ward, at least two wards, there were renovation of, now of our primary schools, all, all constructions in two, two schools each ward. That means about 600 schools. Now for him to get money to do that, he has to pay counterpart funding to uh, SUBEB. That is SUBEB, the Universal Basic Education Commission. We inherited this free education of 18. And what he did, government is a continuous uh, uh, process, so he continued with the, with the, with the uh, process of uh, free education. All the 
uh, administration trust we have been having in the state, they have never taken taken it upon themselves to face a school to rehabilitate it to the status of which this administration did. Because sometimes they will just pick a block of classroom, pick maybe administrative block, maybe uh, do the wall uh, fencing. But in our own case, in this in the in this uh, present dispensation, what we did, we make sure that a school is captured, a school is rehabilitated from the classroom to the staff quarters, and every aspect of the school at least should be should have a face, new facelift. That was what we did. It has never happened in the history of the state. This is the first of its kind. So you see, this administration has achieved a lot. And uh, we have not stopped. I just as I've told you it's a continuous process. We, are, we have moved to vocational and technical school. By the time we complete vocational and technical schools, we we'll also revert back to our conventional schools because we have a reasonable number of day secondary schools. We have almost 60 boarding schools in the state. And we want to uh, make sure that these schools are rehabilitated to UNESCO standard. The whole school development approach, a laudable initiative of Mr. Governor, is highly commendable exercise. In Bidda, Kutigi, Izom, Kwantagura, Rijau, Baro, Tegina, and the state capital, schools that have over the years been left to suffer infrastructural decay have been made functional. The whole school approach is a legacy project for over 45 years. No, no secondary school in Nigeria have got to an uplift like this time. What the governor did is this. He decided that there must be equity and justice. We have three senatorial districts in Niger State, and he picked three schools from each senatorial district. And then this, in Zona A, he picked Idris Lego Kutiki Science Secondary School in Kutigi. He picked Government Gate Secondary School in Bida, and Government Science Secondary School, Baru. Baru is in the hinterland. It's around the river, so it's in the river and area. Then in Zumbi, in Zumbi, he picked Government Science Girls, Mar Mariam Babangida Girls Science Secondary School in Mina. Then he picked Government Science Secondary School, Izom, and Government Secondary School, Tejina. The interesting thing about this spread in Zumbi is that each emirate has one slot because they have three emirates in the slot. Now, in Zonsi, he took government, government Girls Secondary School, Kwantagora. That school is a unity school where you have a, almost every state has a student in that school. Then he picked Government Secondary School, Rijau. Rijau is almost the last local government that is a boundary, a boundary between Niger and Kiri State. Then he picked Maazu Ibrahim Commercial Secondary School, Tegura. College of Education, but I'm aware as a principal with our secretary, he has approved 100 million for the accreditation of the College of Education. The, the state-owned university, that is by the Massive Bible University, they were, their salaries from the state government was about 70 million until he came. The last administration did not add 10 to their salary. Immediately he came and added 10 million naira to them. Now, look at the establishment of the, the training, training Teachers Institute. Our, our education system is collapsing because most of our teachers are not qualified. There's always a gap. And he's trying to make sure that he closes that gap. The Niger State Ministry of Health is working assiduously in line with the health policy spelled out in the development action plan of the Abululu led administration. Giant steps have been taken, some of which are the upgrading and renovation of health institutions, general hospital supply of the state-of-the-art medical equipment, employment of health professionals, as well as the training of healthcare personnel, to mention a few. The accreditation of the medical schools is a legacy project, it's a legacy achievement, because for the past eight, ten years, most of our medical schools, uh, health institutions, are without accreditation. Even the School of Nursing, even, even the School of uh, Nursing Science in Pondura, School of Nursing Bida, School of Midwifery here in a school of health technology. We had a school of nursing for 40 years. There was no accreditation. All their programs were not accredited by the nursing council until this year, March. Why? Because for you to get accreditation, you have to have certain facilities that will pre-qualify you. 
All the four schools are now accredited. The achievements recorded in the areas of works, infrastructure and transport are clearly on parallel. Today, the Ministry of Works and Transport is strategic in the delivery of qualitative service. No fewer than 150 impactful projects have been embarked upon, cutting across all spheres of human endeavors. One thing I would like us to appreciate His Excellency is uh, a resolve not to compromise quality on whatever he does. Coming from the private sector, he knows the value of money. And uh, his belief is always, let's try as much as possible to maximize the benefit from whatever investment the government is going to embark on. And that is why you can see all the road projects in Mina. You can, you can uh, go to Paduke Road. You can go to Brighter Road. You can go to Kuta Road. You can go to Sarikimboso Road. You can go to uh, uh, Makera Road. All these projects are concepts of this administration, and you can go and see the quality to yourself. Go to Bida, go to Kontagora. All the projects, as in road projects, are of very high standard. Other critical uh, infrastructures like electrification, uh, the economic development of every city or community lies heavily on the availability of power. And as a matter of priority, this government has invested a lot of money in connecting more villages to the national grid, as well as a lot of interventions in addressing power outages. This government has procured more than 300 assorted transformers and distributed around the state for improvement on the power supply. Thanks to the former president, Ibrahim Badamasuba Bengida, uh, under whose the first Mina master drain was constructed. But since after that, there hasn't been any major investment towards addressing the, that issue. As a government, His Excellency took it upon himself to ensure that the Mina master drains has been expanded, and that calls for the investment we are seeing around. I'm sure from here, you can look at the State Assembly. This is one investment that for years, there hasn't been any major investment in the addressing the concerns of the State House of Assembly. This government has a priority and uh, have uh, decided to construct new rooms and new offices for the members of the State House of Assembly because as it is today, the place is not convenient for uh, their functions. Most of these structures uh, we put in place symbolizes the kind of government we represent. Uh, it shows you or it tells you how serious the government is. With the largest arable landmass in Nigeria, Niger State economy revolves around agriculture because most of the residents practice farming and rely on it for their survival. The government has already taken advantage of this to woo investors in order to evolve a robust agrarian economy for the state. The land is rich and labor cheap. We have resuscitated our rice farms. They have revitalized our income in our society. They have come into the community and a legacy that has started for more than 30 years has been activated today. More and more, of, in fact, no youth have seen this type of production in the past 30 years. So it is a very welcome development. Given the strategic role water plays in the sustenance of human life, irrespective of the location, either in the village or the town, the government has initiated a process to assuage the shortfall of water supply to the people. Besides the renovation, rehabilitation, and upgrading of dams, motorized solar boreholes are being drilled in areas deemed worse hit by the situation. At the inception of this administration, water supply was a big issue because we are undersupplying the amount of water required by the citizens, especially in the state capital especially the state capital. However, as of today, I can say there's a big achievement and improvement in terms of people that have access to water supply. So there's a big departure from where we're coming from and where we are now. But however, we're yet to get where we are yet to get to our destination on supplying water 247. The turnaround maintenance has commenced over a year ago and uh, with the supply of uh, Pumping, pumping, pump, uh, pumping equipment. Because of the access I have to the governor, I realize that he has an exceptional passion 
for the people, especially in the area of water. And uh, he's more passionate in the rural water supply. Last week, he have approved for me a, a program of 100 borehole, which he said he wanted them completed in, in two months. The Ministry of Information and Strategy is a critical component in administration. The digitization of Niger State Television, NSTV, and the FM station couldn't have come at a better time. Niger State Television, you see the magnificent edifice put in place by this, by this government and can really be seen in many states of this country. Women and youth largely make up the population. Hence, women and youth empowerment cannot be overemphasized. Several empowerment initiatives have been implemented to ensure self-reliance and sustainability. To this effect, the Ministry of Youth and that of Sport have enjoyed government funding, so also as the Ministry of Gender Affairs and Social Development. Training in the areas of carpentry and generally, confectionery making, catering, um, electrical appliances, training of repairs of electrical appliances and electrical installations, and so many areas of human endeavor. Now that is what the governor is doing, and this is cutting across the state. And even now, youth have been encouraged to participate in programs of agriculture. I mean, there are so many programs that the government that the government is involving, particularly that has to do with youth empowerment and youth training. Huge investment opportunities abound in Niger State, both human and natural resources, not to mention agriculture. The government is doing everything possible to attract meaningful investors to the state and has gone ahead to sign several memoranda of understanding MOU in line with its public-private partnership initiative. Already there is a light at the end of the tunnel as Niger State enters into partnership with Angote Group of Companies. Already last week, we were here for the Niger State Investment Summit with the theme of impact investing for advancing agricultural economy and integration. During the summit, we indicated our intention to invest in an integrated sugar industry at an estimated total investment of $450 million. This agreement, all about, is about uh, we signed an MOU with Angote. Uh, to grow sugar cane and at the same time to install uh, uh, a sugar processing facility. The investment uh, uh, we're, for the investment we're looking at a region of about 450 million dollars, uh, over 15 or 16 thousand hectares of land. To realize a robust economy, there is a need for conducive and enabling environment for would-be investors to do business because business thrives where there is security of lives and property. The security system in the state is firing on all cylinders to cop crime and restiveness. The police cannot do it alone because security is everyone's business. Hence the stakeholders forum on security. The uh, issue of security in the hands of traditional institutions was certainly based on the network that has been established even before the colonial master you know, came to Nigeria to come and colonize Nigeria. The institution has been there for quite some time. So we have elements of command and control. There is need for more synergy between security agencies for us to work as a team. Function of a government is not just to pay salaries. We have 40,000 staff. We get 2.8 billion, 3 billion. We paid almost 2.5 billion in salaries. So 40,000 staff, 2.5 billion. Uh, what do you do with capital uh, projects? So we, we, we are trying very hard to see that we improve on our, our, on our idea. We are managing our resources. We have cut down a lot of unnecessary spendings. And that is why we're able to execute most of these projects I outlined. Uh, a lot of infrastructure projects going on as well. Um, as we move, move along, and hopefully the, uh, the resources will improve, we'll do more. Uneasy, they say, lies the head that wears the crown. His Excellency Alaji Abu Bakar Sanibello came fully prepared for the Herculean job. As such, his determination to take Niger State to greater heights cannot be dampened. One good time 
deserves another.